Alright everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm going to do a video today on lucid dreaming, how to lucid dream and why you should lucid dream. And I've had thousands of lucid dreams in my life and they, this, they kind of just occurred spontaneously for me. I just started becoming lucid in my dreams and I, this was during the early years of my Kundalini Awakening. If you want to find out about my Kundalini Awakening, if you're new to the channel, you can check out some of my other videos. Um, but for a period of say like, I think it was two or three years, I just had constant lucid dreams, night after night, lucid dream into lucid dream, continuously. Um, and that's continued uh, up to the present. Um, I, they're, they're not, I don't have them as frequently now. Um, although, you know, I can, if I set my intentions and do some of the things I talk about in this video, then, you know, you can get lucid in that state. So yeah, that's kind of my experience on it. And I'll, I'll go into a little bit about it. So firstly, what is lucid dreaming? Well, lucid dreaming is simply the fact of becoming consciously aware that you are dreaming while you're asleep and while you're in the dream state. So you realize, oh, okay, I'm dreaming. And this opens up massive possibilities for all sorts of fun adventures, but also a lot of healing and some deep spiritual practices and awarenesses. For example, uh, Naropa, who was like a Tibetan Buddhist, lucid dreaming, or as, or as he called it, dream yoga, um, is one of uh, Naropa's six paths to enlightenment. Um, and yeah, there's the, like in Tibetan Buddhism, some in some schools, they have practices where they will all meet up together in the dream space for a uh, an actual lesson so yeah yeah I mean this is like the potential of this practice is is absolutely mind-blowing some people might think oh well I don't dream or or whatever or yeah everybody dreams it's just if if you don't think you dream you're just basically forgetting that you've you've dreamt in an eight-hour sleep cycle you would average like five times you would go into REM sleep where you're into the dream state and this just happens every night for everybody so you you do dream and how do we know people lucid dream uh, well, if you the kind of person who wants scientific studies to validate uh, that lucid dreaming is real, I mean, personally, <laughs> I just don't care about that kind of thing so much. It's it's interesting to me, but I validate it by experiencing it. Lucid dreaming is real because I've experienced it. I don't really need scientific studies to prove that it's real. But anyway, there have been studies, and in the 70s, it was first proven um, in modern times that people could lucid dream, and that was... Um, studies by a guy called Keith Hearn in the University of Hull in England and the way they did that was by getting lucid dreamers to communicate in the dream state by moving their, their eyes I believe it was seven times left to right when they entered that lucid dream state because in dreaming like your whole body is essentially paralyzed but you can still move your eyes so the dreamers would get into that dream state get into the lucid dream state and they would have you know uh, electronic nodes and things attached to them so they knew they were dreaming and they would move the eyes in this way to communicate and there's been further studies done more recently so i'll go through a few steps of how to become lucid in the dream i've got like five steps that i'm going to go through and then after that we will i'll give you a few examples of some of the healing work i've done and some of the experiences i've had at lucid dreaming so yeah the first step is obviously to remember your dreams if you don't remember your dreams then you're not going to be able to lucid dream essentially and there's a way that you can do that um, and that is as you fall asleep we enter like a hypnagogic state which is a little bit like a hypnosis state and if you repeat a certain mantra to yourself um, as you've fallen into that dream state then that can be a really great way of remembering your dreams one that I use and I got this one from a guy called Charlie Morley who does a lot of lucid dream stuff and it is, tonight I remember my dreams, I have perfect dream recall. And if you just repeat that like 21 times or something like that, a number of times as you're going to sleep, then that's a great way to get the subconscious mind to remember the dreams. Number two is a dream diary. So if you keep in a dream diary, that's also going to help you remember your dreams because it's telling the subconscious or your higher self or whatever you want to, however you want to refer to it, that you're interested in this practice, you're paying attention. It's like you're creating this kind of conscious bridge between the waking state and the dream world 
by writing it all down. It's also useful um, to find what are known as dream signs. So these are like themes that will come up in your dream or certain things that will be in your dream that prove to you it's a dream. Um, so like a ridiculous example might be like you might see pink elephants. Well, obviously you're not going to see like pink elephants in the real world. So that's a dream sign and they can actually help you become lucid by figuring out what are your dream signs by recording all your dreams down in this dream diary you'll see these patterns and think all right that's a dream sign and by becoming consciously aware of that then when you're asleep and dreaming you'll see that thing and you'll be like ah right i'm dreaming so it can be a good way to actually trigger you into lucidity as well number three is and this is the in my opinion the most powerful way for triggering lucid dreaming and this is known as reality testing so what you do is you carry out certain actions during the day while you're awake to um, trigger this to occur in the dream state to get you lucid. So I'll give you an example. So the one I've used, um, and I got this one from Robert Wagner, who's wrote a great book on lucid dreaming called Gateway to, uh, Lucid Dreaming Gateway to the Inner Self. And you basically, so as many times as you can during the day, bring your hands up to your face and say, am I dreaming? Um, or you can say, tonight in my dreams, I will see my hands and know I'm dreaming. I just use the shorthand one, like, am I dreaming? But basically by doing this as many times as you can during the day, what you'll probably find is when you're asleep in your dream, this will just occur. You'll bring your hands up in the dream and say, am I dreaming? And then you'll like you'll realize you are um, another one that people often use is t flicking on a light switch on and off and saying am i dreaming or every time they turn on a light say am i dreaming because in a dream very more often than not you can't affect the, the hue of light in a dream by doing that so then if that occurs in a dream it'll trigger that memory so that's a couple of those there are other ones as well but i won't i won't get into them all in this um, I'll perhaps leave a link in the description of a article that goes into more of those if you're interested. But for me, just the simple hands in front of the first one, it's great. It really works well. And number four is dream signs, which I've kind of already talked about in the uh, dream diary point. And so, yeah, that's if you notice familiar theme, themes in your dreams that are dream signs, paying attention to those can bring you into lucidity. Eh? And number five, and this is a really important one, is dream planning. And having a good reason to lucid dream is a very important step in this. What you would do is like plan, what would I like to do when I become lucid in the dream? This is probably a little bit more an ad of, an of an advanced one because you've got to practice getting lucid and staying lucid a few t times before this. And I'll explain some ways to do that in a moment. But having a reason to lucid dream is a powerful trigger for lucid dreams to occur. So you would plan what you want to do. So you could write it down, for example. Um, so if you wanted to connect with your inner child for some healing, you could say, in my next lucid dream, I want to meet my inner child. Uh, when he or she appears, I will embrace them with love and integrate all trauma or something like that. So just, just plan something out of what you want to do. You could draw a picture to symbolically represent what you to do, what you want to do in that dream state. Dreams operate in the language of symbols and so putting that idea into a symbol is a powerful additional thing um, and then you have a call to action as well so write down what you're going to say when you become lucid so for example you in that example it could be like in a child come to me in the dream you know you would call that out in the dream state so there are like five steps to becoming lucid and now I'm going to explain how to stay lucid when you become lucid and the kind of things that you can do in the dream state. This is known as Me Me and this was, I got this from the book that I mentioned by Robert Wagner earlier. I've added an additional E to this though, um, so yeah I'll go through this. So the first M is modulate your emotions. So one of the issues that people have when they're lucid dreaming is as soon as they realize they're dreaming, they get so overexcited. It's like, I'm lucid dreaming. And then they'll wake up automatically. So you've got to modulate your emotions. So just try and be calm, try and sort of come into your heart in the dream space and try and like relax. Um, and this takes practice. It might take many, 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 many 
um, initial lucidity awarenesses in a dream state to be able to get this, to be able to hold it. But just keep keep going, and you will you will get there. Um, and yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so, so modulate emotions is the first one. Then E is expand awareness. And this is to like expand your awareness out in the dream state. So what you might say is greater clarity now or something. And so you're expanding that lucidity out into the whole dream space. The next M is maintain awareness. And that is essentially, th these are just all follow ons from each other. That's just like holding that awareness in the dream space. Um, you can maybe focus in on something like in it's incredible when you do this in the lucid dream, like the dream becomes so like HD in a sense, like I've picked up leaves in lucid dreams and it's it's more real than, and it's as, well, as real as this reality, definitely. It gets so HD, you can see all the little pathways on the leaves, the hairs, it's, it's really mind blowing how clear and crystal clear these dreams become when you bring full consciousness into them. The next E, is express intent and this is where you get into um, like I said um, when I gave the example of maybe you want to work with your inner child maybe you just want to fly early on because that's a beautiful fun experience you can fly around in lucid dreams um, so yeah that's expressing your intent calling out into the dream of what you want to do and the final one the final E is the expectation effect now this is very important it's a slightly more advanced one, but it's very important. In the lucid dream, when you realize you're lucid, you've got to expect that these things can happen. So for example, like if you want to fly, you've got to expect that you can fly. You've got to know that you can fly. Um, if you think, oh, I can't fly, then you're probably not gonna be able to fly. Understand it's a dream, understand that you can do that. You can walk through walls, you can fly all sorts of things, you can have crazy superpowers. <laughs> it's just such a fun practice and also very deep as well, which I'll, yeah, I'll get into some of, the, some of my healing experiences, uh, as I said in a moment. So yeah, what's it like? It's amazing. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful um, practice. You can have all sorts of fun in there. A lot of people at first might just choose to have sex with people and stuff like that, and you know, that's fun, whatever. Um, <laughs> You can call various people into your dream, as I said, fly around, superpowers. I've had experiences of like battling huge armies. Um, like I was under attack by like huge armies and just having like, just being able to go and just like blow them all away. All sorts of uh, things like that. So yeah, it's it's really, really amazing. Um, talking to dream characters. This is one of the most interesting aspects for me. It's it's wild, <laughs> it really is. So when you're talking to, well, before I get into this one, actually, I'll just touch on the layers of dream. In my, from when you lucid dream, you're going to become aware of various different layers of dreaming, um, and this is not an exhaustive list by any means. But I consider to, that to be like the subconscious layer of dreaming. So you might be like playing out your subconscious kind of fears or emotions or desires or yeah things like that and and in that layer of dreaming it's to me it's a bit more cloudy all the characters in the dream space are your projections and when you talk to those characters it's really interesting because if you get into like a deep dialogue with those characters they, they can only go so far it's like um an npc and a non-player character in a computer game or something it's like they're running, they're operating on these rules, and if you ask certain questions, it's funny. It's funny watching them. They'll be just like, uh, they can't respond to it, um, and it, it's there'll be like all this confusion on the face, and it's really interesting. Um, and then, so at a higher level than that, I believe, like a dream level above that, is we're going to like the collective consciousness, and in those, in that space, when you talk to characters, my personal opinion, through as I said, thousands of lucid dreams and, and, and hundreds and hundreds of interactions with dream characters in this lair. I believe that that's those people's subconscious, higher self, whatever you want to call it, soul kind of asleep and you are actually meeting up with their consciousness and they're either asleep or it's the part of them that is always in that level of reality, so to speak. And this is incredible. I've woke people up in this lair. So for example, somebody 
I'm like, no, in the physical, I will meet them in this layer of the dream space. And I was like, do you realize we're dreaming? So when I'm lucid, I'm like, do you realize we're dreaming? And you'll often find these characters are kind of like walking around looking kind of drunk and, and desert. And I've like literally sort of grabbed them and like, we're dreaming. And when they wake up, like, it's like, their eyes light up and then you can get into a deep conversation with them and um yeah i've also had experiences in that layer of dreaming where i've been sat around uh, talking and just expressing sort of spiritual truths to many people who i knew in the past um in my waking life um political ideas things like that and so I really think the potential for this practice for those of us on the awakening path is to have a huge impact on the collective consciousness because we are communicating with the subconscious levels of other people asleep. And it's, you know, it's a bit like Inception. Um, you can uh, implant those ideas um, and spiritual truths uh, into the collective. Um, obviously the potential for this, I guess, like as explored in the film Inception is for a, a darker shadow side of this. Um, but that's not something, you know, I'm interested in. I'm, uh, and yeah, but I guess with all these spiritual practices, there is potential for misuse, so to speak. So yeah, then some higher other layers of dreaming, you can get into like sort of more abs abstract dreams where it's like colors and shapes and things like that. And then there's like DMT like levels of dream i've had some phenomenal experiences like you fly sh flying through space like breathing underwater like meeting giant psychedelic jellyfish type things um it's just yeah just some amazing amazing experiences in, in that in that layer of dreaming like shooting through like wormholes all sorts of stuff so that's really really fun um so yeah that's a few la that's layers of dreams and speaking to characters also we can do a lot of deep healing in dreams so you can deal with emotional issues from your past, dealing with past trauma, inner child issues, understanding your own subconscious and what things are going on in your, in your um, yeah, what programs are running in your subconscious. You can implant thoughts deeply into your own subconscious that blossom out and, and have effect in the physical. So you can do deep healing in that way. You can connect with your guides. Um, I'll give an example uh, shortly when I have uh, of that occurring for me. You can have creative insights. So for example, if you're an artist, you could be in that lucid dream state and say, show me a piece of art that, I, that I'm going to paint. And you might see like the most amazing artwork. Um, or if you're a musician, let me hear a song. There's all sorts of creative benefits. Like if you're a tennis player or something like that, you can practice and you will get better by practicing in the lucid dream state. And then, yeah, it's, it's essentially a path to enlightenment. You are, one thing I think that goes on is the more you bring this conscious state into the dream state, the more the dream consciousness, it's like you're creating a two-way bridge. So dream consciousness can like come into this, into this reality. And that can really, you know, just make you profoundly understand how the difference between that dream space and this reality, like this collective dream essentially that we're in, is not that much, there's not that much difference. And it really gets, it really hits home some like metaphysical truths about the nature of reality. Um, when you can, like, as, I, as I gave that example of the leaf, when you can pull that dream state into absolute crisp, crisp um, high definition, as clear as this, and if you're thinking, well, th is this just my mind creating this in the dream? It, it just opens up a direct experience of these quite deep philosophical and spiritual questions about the nature of reality and things like that. So it's very beneficial in that way. You can practice yoga in your dreams. You can meditate in your dreams. You can ask for information about the future, things like that. So I'm gonna give a couple of examples of, just to sort of give a little bit of context of healing I've done in the dream state while being lucid. And I will also give a bit of information on how to deal with if problems come up in the dream like if you're getting attacked by anything or yeah how to heal if you're under attack for example in a dream or if you've done the call in the inner child and you wanted to heal that inner child the best way to deal with any situation in the lucid dream like that is to give it love 
So I've had experiences lucid dreaming where I was getting attacked by all these groups of people and uh, groups of people, and at first I was like fighting, fighting, and then I just re I was lucid and I just realised just send them love. And as soon as I sent love to them, the whole thing just shifted, and then they all just started hugging me, and it was this massive group hug going on. And so I think you like healing your own inner demons in that sense, um, and there's perhaps layers of dreaming where you're connecting to you know, entities and things like that as well. Um, but sending love is the number one option. Um, and that would be for like, you're in a child as well and things like that. Embrace it and give it love. And the example of this for me is I had a series of three lucid dreams. Um, and when you have three dreams in a row, you know, pay attention to that. If things come in threes, it's worth paying attention to them. They've got, a, it's very likely they've got a specific reason for that, to get that information to you at that point in your life. And so the first dream, I was in these woods and I was like digging up. I realized that there was this child buried in the woods and I was digging her up, digging her up. And she was like coughing soil up. And I realized it was um, my niece as a child. I was like, okay, that was a bit strange. But then the night after I had a dream when I were, and I was back at my junior school and I realized that there were all these children buried under the playing fields in the school, which is a powerful metaphor in my opinion if you think about what happens to the inner child at school and so I had to like dig all these children up in the dreams and I was like pulling the soil out of the mouth and like waking up all these kind of buried children uh, including like what one that was, that was me <laughs> um, and so that was really powerful and then the dream after that the day after that I had another dream and I was near my parents house and I could see the rubbish bin, like the waste bin outside the house. And there was a little fetus like baby next to the bin. And I immediately realized in this lucid dream that that fetus was me, that fetus baby. It was like just born thingy. And so it's at my parents' house next to a bin, you know, obviously they're a strong symbol of a certain amount of rejection that that little baby had felt. And I was, when I was first born, I was like premature. So I was put in one of those like incubate, um, are they called incubation things? Can't remember exactly what they're called, but put into one of those little chambers. So I was taken away from my mother very, almost straight away and put in one of those chambers. And I and so I realized that this was that aspect of me that had felt this kind of rejection, just didn't know what to go do. So I picked up this little baby that was me and held it in my arms and just gave it all this love and the whole dream just like it it like light just burst into the dream and it was just incredibly incredibly healing and i woke up just feeling absolutely blissful so that's that's an example of like the healing that you can do in these lucid dreams with with old past trauma you can really get deep and heal some important things um i'll i'll also say if you are getting in trouble in a dream in a lucid dream and look, sending love doesn't work. Uh, you can obviously fly away. You can wake yourself up if you really need to. Techniques like pinching yourself, blinking a lot, uh, that works to wake you up. Or just shouting in the dream, wake up now. Now sometimes you might get weird experiences. I've had like waking up into a dream, into another dream, into another dream. It's like wake up and, um, but you will wake up eventually. So, so yeah, that's a relatively briefish overview of lucid dreaming. And I'll just add a list of a few things that are kind of peripheral to lucid dreaming, but that are going to help you lucid dream. Things like diet. You want to eat clean. Eat clean. If you're eating clean, you're much more likely to remember your dreams. You're much more likely to be able to come lucid. Don't eat too close to bedtime as well. All these things that I'm going to list now are just great to do anyway, but they do help with lucid dreaming. So it's a good idea to eat at least three hours before you go to bed. I try and do that all the time. Go to bed early as well if you can and sleep at regular times. If you're in that regular sleep cycle and going to bed fairly early, that's going to help. No stimulating activity just before bed. So it's a good idea to give like a half an hour, probably an hour at least of not really doing anything stimulating before sleep. No like checking emails just before you go to bed, things like that. So, you, you know, you can meditate, meditate before bed's good. And then, as I mentioned at the start of this video, set your intention that you want to become lucid as you're going to sleep. 
having total darkness in the bedroom this is important for sleep but again it, it helps with lucid dreaming and also blue light exposure before you go into bed i'll maybe do a video on blue light exposure separately but just very quickly blue light is in all computer screens tv screens things like that street lights that they've put up everywhere these these new led ones um and this is very detrimental to melatonin production and messes with your cycles there's apps you can get for uh, flux flux for pcs and things like that if you're on mac and iphone um it's got a built-in one called night shift so you can turn that on and that pulls the blue light out of your devices um at sunset and so i just highly recommend using night shift or like i said if you're on uh, android pc or whatever you can use flux and finally make your bedroom a sacred space no TVs in there, no computers in there. It's a place for either sleeping or meditating or doing yoga. You know, that's my bedroom. That's what it's for. I don't bring other aspects into it. This is very important. And I think this helps with people for sleeping in general, but create a sacred space in there. Like this is a sacred time. You're spending a lot of your life asleep. Create a sacred space that is just for those activities. Don't pull the activities of the day into that space. So yeah, I'll leave that there. If you're interested to look further, um, I recommend, I mentioned this book, but I recommend Robert Wagner's book, uh, Lucid Dreaming. And I hope this has been an enjoyable and helpful video for you. And uh, good luck, Lucid Dreaming. It's a beautiful practice and you can get a lot out of it. So I recommend everybody give this a go if, you, if, you, uh, if, it, if it interests you. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, peace.